All right, today we're going to be working with the Michigan King Salmon, fresh from the west side of Michigan, the Pierre Marquette River. Uh, as you can see, we have very large, you know, 10 plus pound fish, plenty enough here to feed a lot of people. Uh, it's been headed and gutted, and now we're just going to clean it up a little bit before we start our recipes. We're going to start by taking this nice back line here, just inside of the fins and we're going to go all the way down to the backbone. This is pretty easy to find. You're going to find some resistance with the knife. So we're going to come back in and just right through. Nice sharp knife. Bring it down until you feel the resistance from the backbone. All the way down to the tail. This is one of our favorite fish to use for our Gourmet Gone Wild series. Uh, it's plentiful in Michigan. You can catch them in the big lake. You can catch them in a lot of streams. Very palatable. Tastes a lot like the salmon you'll get from a store, but this is 100% organic, free range, wild salmon. So you can see we've come down now about uh, half of the way through the top of the fish. We've found our backbone and uh, some of this rib cage you can meet up with from the inside. We're just gonna follow these bones with our knife to remove the filet. Now that we've found the backbone here of the fish, we're gonna need to skim along and go on the outside of the pin bones that are in here. And that's easily done by just dragging your knife and pulling away from the fish. Come right through those. Once you get to this mid, this back quarter here, it's uh, real simple to just put your knife all the way through the back of the fish so it comes out here. Then if you just push down and just keep running it out towards the tail, you'll have removed the back half. Again, we're just following some of those bones down. And we here we have the first half removed. You guys can see this is real nice, pink, firm, fresh flesh. Uh, a lot like you see in the restaurants. Now we're left with one nice long fillet. We're only the only bones remaining are the pin bones left from the spine going out here. And we need to remove the skin because today we'll be using it for a recipe for chowder and we won't need the skin for grilling. Here we're gonna come in. Cut down to the flesh. So we get this little tail piece up and we're left with the skin. Get a nice little cut. You can put your thumb through here. Allows for firm control so you don't slip with your knife or the fish. And we're just moving the, the blade back and forth, moving towards the head while we're keeping firm pressure here backwards with the fish. A little shake. We have nice skinned salmon here, very little waste. All right, here we have the pin bones that are remaining. You can pick these up real easily by just following your hand down towards the, fit, the front of the fish here like this, and you can feel them in here. They're just tiny pin bones. You'll come in with your knife, and when you push against it, you can see them kind of poking out here. They just follow, you, you can feel your knife pulling along them. And these pin bones will stop after what would be where the dorsal fin was. They'll stop, you, you can't feel them back in here anymore. They're not there. Uh, since we are cutting this up and cubing it, it's nice just to remove them all at once. There's no reason to leave large fillets here. Now we're coming back on just the other side of these bones. And you can always make sure you do by seeing them pop through, following them down all the way to your cutting board. And we'll remove those out. 
Always be sure to go back through and check and make sure you got all your pin bones. One of the worst things you can have in a recipe is come across a sharp pin bone. So you come back in and just keep feeling in for them. This guy's clean. We have one right here. So we just catch them on the other side. Pull it out. These are nice and free. So we're going to be cutting up these salmon fillets to use in chowder. The chowder we want, we're going to want nice, large pieces of salmon so you really get that flavor when you're biting into it. I like to keep them in about one inch cubes. They will shrink a little bit and always when you mix them in, they break down as, as the chowder cooks. So a great line to follow is your first pin bone line all the way back. Come up, maybe two or three more lines through. Come back through and cross them off. Now we have chunked up salmon. All right, we got our delicious Michigan King salmon. We're gonna be making a chowder, creamy chowder for a nice delicious winter dish with it. We're gonna start with two pots here. To our large pot, we're gonna to wanna to add two and a half quarts of vegetable stock. And kick the heat up. To this, we're going to do a little seasoning just to uh, help start our layers. We got some rosemary, some thyme, and some bay leaves. And we're also going to add some Old Bay seasoning. Now, what I really love to do with my chowders is layer it throughout. I like to use the same stock. I like to really build layers of flavor on top of each other. So you'll see that as we develop our recipe. In our second pot, we're going to turn it on and we're going to add, uh, right here we have about a quarter of a cup of butter. We're just going to let that start melting. To our melting butter, we're going to add some wonderful bacon. We're just going to let that kind of cook and brown out. The bacon fat is going to mix in with the butter fat. It'll crisp up a bit. We're going to be using this fat to make a roux to thicken our chowder. Now that we have a little heat to our vegetable base with the added uh, seasonings, we're gonna add in some diced Michigan white potatoes and let these cook out. Our recipe today is gonna be enough for about 12 to 15 guests for a nice full portion of chowder. All right, this is, uh, this is about where the bacon can be for being pulled out. You can see it's re rendered a good deal of its fat, but there is still some, some softness to it so that when we have it in the finished product, it's still a delicious bite. So we're just going to go in and remove all these bacon pieces. All right here we have the pan we've cooked our bacon in. We're going to take off all this rendered fat. You can see we got about half a cup here of nice rendered fat. And then on the bottom of this pan you can see all that brown bit. That's actually sautéed protein. It's very delicious. Adds real depth to it. So like I was saying, we're going to layer this chowder. So we're going to use this same pot so we don't lose any of that flavoring to cook some of our vegetables. Okay, and to the pan we're going to return heat and we're going to add a little olive oil to keep that bottom from scorching. And before it gets really too hot, we're going to add in a little mirepoix vegetables, just some chopped celery, carrots, and onion. We're going to toss that right in. Now to help loosen up all the flavoring on the bottom, you're going to want to use a wooden or a rubber spatula. And just keep moving it around quick, you know, as the liquid starts to come out of these vegetables. You can start to use that to rub against the bottom of the pan and lift up all that flavor. Just after a few short seconds of sauteing in there, we're going to add some dry sherry. Always want to add your alcohol ingredients away from your flame, so just come off a bit. This is a low alcohol sherry. We're just going to pour that in. Saute and return to heat. This added sherry will really help you loosen up all that delicious 
brown bacon. And we're gonna let these cook for about five minutes till they soften up and we'll set them to the side as well. And to help build our layers, we're gonna take the, and remove these potatoes. I like to use a nice fine mesh china cap over another pot. And you see all of our potatoes as well as most of our seasoning is in here, which is fine. We'll be adding this back and uh, while the potatoes sit in that seasoning, they'll start to soak it up and really become delicious. All right, now we have our second layer of potatoes coming out of our vegetable stock along with some of the seasonings. We'll set that aside and we'll add a, one more layer, this nice Michigan King salmon. That goes right into this hot stock. Just a nice, soft, gentle stir. Our goal right now is to cook the salmon but not break it up. Again, we want those nice big chunks in our finished chowder. We've only kept our salmon in for about three to six minutes. We don't want to overcook it. This is going to be returned back to the finished chowder and that will help finish it through. So again, with the china cap, we're going to add it right through. And we'll set this off to the side as well. All right, we've been sauteing our vegetables for about five minutes. They're pretty tender. You don't want them soft. You still want them to be a little bit firm, but you want most of that sherry to be cooked down. To this now we're gonna add some garlic just to help deepen that flavor. And that was about a tablespoon of garlic. We'll keep this hot, but we'll remove it from the heat. Here we have our butter and our bacon fat. We're going to add this to a nice, fresh, clean pan, and we're going to be making a roux. Roux is just uh, a nice thickening agent that's going to give our chowder a real good, heavy base. So to our butter and bacon fat, we'll have a nice, medium-low heat, and we're going to start adding flour. And we'll just mix this in. Our goal is to get really fine mix. You don't want to have any clumps in here, so if you can add in segments, not all at once. Keep stirring. It's a little thin, so we're going to add some more flour. Alright, it's starting to come together. You can see as we circle through the pan, starts to clump together. You know you're getting it just about thick enough. You don't want it crumbly, but you don't want it thin. This will probably be our last. There, now we've got together a nice, almost Play-Doh like roux. And one of the keys to roux is once you get your appropriate mixture is to turn your flame down real low and let these kind of simmer together to so really help break the powder down, the flour, so you don't feel it in your palate in the final product. So here we have our veggie stock that we started with. We layered in the seasonings, and we layered in the potatoes, and then we layered in that wonderful Michigan King salmon. Now we're going to help bring up the body by adding some heavy cream. And I like to do a one to two ratio of heavy cream to stock. So we had about two quarts of stock left after boiling the potatoes and salmon, and to it we ordered, added about a quart of heavy cream. And now we really should be able to tell where our chowder is. Everything's been in here, although none of our heavy ingredients are there. The aroma is still fishy, it's still potato-y, it's still bacon-y. Everything's touched this stock. It's just not uh, in there as solid pieces. So we'll bring this to a boil and uh, we'll add this roux and thicken it back up. So now that we have a good, hot, rolling boil, we're gonna start adding a little bit of this roux back in. So we have it there ready to go. We're just gonna shimmy it down.
All right, we'll crank our, our heat down a little bit to a nice medium low. Let that thicken up. It'll take about 10 minutes for its true thickness to really develop. You know, don't think it's too thin in the beginning. Just let it kind of cook out. Let that water grab on, onto that flour and thicken up. But uh, always try to keep a nice steady stir. This time will also allow the flour to pick up the flavorings of that stock. So when you're eating, it doesn't taste like flour, it tastes like part of the dish. Right now that our chowder's thickened up and it's had time to cook together, we're gonna start adding in all those ingredients. First, we're gonna switch from a whisk to a spatula. We really wanna fold these ingredients in so that they don't break up. We're gonna start with our vegetable mix. Next, we're gonna add these potatoes. Now's a really good time to take these herbs and remove these bay leaves. Bay leaves aren't uh, really palatable. They never really soften up. They're hard to chew. So we wanna go ahead, take those all out and add our potatoes in. We don't wanna forget the bacon we pulled out earlier. And of course, our wild Michigan King salmon. Just nice and gently fold this in. And now's a perfect time to grab a spoon and see how it tastes. All right, so we need a little salt, a little pepper to help bring these flavors all together. Here I have a nice salt and pepper mix. You can see there's a lot of different styles of pepper in there. I really think pepper is one of the most important seasonings you can have. So this has a red, a white, some black, all crushed together to really balance the upfront peppery flavor as well as the back of the palate peppery flavor. And nice kosher salt. So pretty, pretty generous, it, you know, could probably use a, another tablespoon of this. And uh, stir, fold nice and carefully. 